Praise the Lord, Wednesday night. How are y'all doing? This is a wonderful night to sing, to dance, to shout of the goodness of Jesus. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Hey, come on, we continue and our teachers to reach tonight. And we're expecting God to move like never before. Come on, dance a little bit with us. Hey, listen. There's a river running. It never will run dry. Lord, rain. Yes, Lord, rain. Flood gates are open, and it never will run dry. Lord, rain. Lord, rain. Come on, sing that with us. There's a river. There's a river.
your hands tonight. God, we ask that you release the rain. Release your glory, Father. Release your power. As we give you our worship, Father, will you come down and meet us tonight? Come down and meet us tonight, God. Sing my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you.
We're so happy you're with us tonight. If you don't mind, will you please be seated and turn your attention to the screen. We have something we'd like to share with you. Good evening, World Harvest Church. It is so good to see you during our midweek service. I'm Cameron Fontana, and I'm part of the Dream Team, the volunteer corps that keeps all of the gears of WHC moving. And we wanna give you the opportunity to be a part of it by taking the next step in your spiritual growth. You know, one of the many things we learned from our pastor is that the mark of spiritual growth is when we move beyond just consuming the vision to actually contributing to the vision. You're such an important part of God's plan and design. So we want to do everything we can to help you take the next step toward your maturity in Christ. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is a process designed to take your faith to deeper levels and truly discover and experience what it means to love God and love people. It's also like a meet and greet, a super laid back dinner where you get to personally meet our pastor, Rod Parsley, and other members of our family and dream team, all while hearing about our story our core beliefs, and the vision to reach the 576,000 people within our community. We also have childcare, so those of you with kids are totally covered. Now, we hope you know that World Harvest Church is here for you and your family for more than just one service a week. So if you had a good time, and I'm 100% sure you did, come back and join Pastor Parsley, Harvest Music Live, and Kid Harvest this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to grab a member of our dream team. We're all wearing this purple shirt right here. And for more information, just visit our website, whc.life. Enjoy the rest of the service. The hottest trends. The latest Ooh. craze. What's trending now? Fidget spinners. On, on, on fleek. The new man bun. Gotta put my glasses on. Can you believe that this worked? That you really found love? And you were kissing a lot of guys oh, last week. I Six know. guys. I mean, I like to kiss. That's insane. Every week. On Sundays. A new series. From Pastor. Rod Parsley. Yes. What the world it says. Is trending. Damn. Damn. Um, and what the Bible says is true. Oh, I'm so excited. I think it's going to be awesome. Hashtag, that's how we do. Catch me outside, how about that? Oh, how many of y'all know it's good to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night? Oh, come on, is there anybody that believes that miracles still happen? Is there anybody that believes that we still serve a God that saves? Am I still in a room of faith, of hope, of love tonight? Well, here's what I want you to do for the next few moments. I want you to give a big shout that wakes your neighbor up and just let the devil know that you have victory. Woo! Now high five your neighbor and say it's going to be a good night in church tonight. You drew the lucky card and you got to sit next to me. It's so good to be here in Columbus, Ohio. I am Pastor Manny Gonzalez, the campus pastor at our World Harvest Church Elkhart campus. Any of our Elkhart family that's watching us tonight, we love you so much. We thank God for you. Noah, Josie, Gideon, Hannah, I know you're watching. Baby, get him in bed here soon because I'm coming home. In Jesus' name. <laughs> How many of y'all are excited about the man of God that we have take this pulpit every single week? A true visionary, a captain, a general. I thank God. This past week, I, if you need to go back and get saved, I, I, I advise you just go ahead and get back on rodparsley.tv and check out the message from our pastor this past Sunday. If you have ever been uncertain in the season that we are living in, you have absolute certainty that we are living in the last days. And if that terrifies you, I'm sorry. Hopefully tonight we'll get you right. But I'm excited. I'm enthused. I'm pumped because I know 
know that we're about to meet him in the air and even it may look tragic it may look crazy but we have faith in Jesus Christ and when you got faith in Jesus you can go through anything and come out on the other side better than what you came into it and so tonight I get the opportunity to come in here and, and talk and preach for a little bit about the wonderful uh, series that we have going on right now called Teach Us to Reach. How many of y'all want to reach the world for Jesus Christ? Oh, come on. How many of y'all want to put this world upside down and see revival take place from this house all across the world? And I think that's great, but before we get to the rest of the world tonight, we're going to get home in your business. Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's amazing how oftentimes we have great enthusiasm when it comes to reaching the world, but we forget our own home. Pastor said it best a few weeks back, we sometimes fly over the mission field to get to the mission field. There's a mission field in your teenager's bedroom. There's a mission field in that sister-in-law you have that's absolutely crazy and lost her mind. Somebody just said, amen, she is crazy. You must be a prophet. But one thing is for certain, we're not just called to reach some. We're called to reach them all at home and abroad. And tonight, we're going to start by reaching them right where we are. Somebody say, teach me to reach. Start with your home. The scripture, Matthew 16, 26, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than a soul? And I, I, over the course of the last couple of weeks, we've seen tragedy strike this land, strike home, strike abroad. And we've seen families in the middle of emergency situations. And if anything, it reminded me that we have to be prepared. You have to be prepared, prepared for uncertainty, prepared for the emergency situation, prepare for the worst case scenario because it's in the worst case scenario that the greatest blessings can come. And so what I wanted to do tonight is I just wanted to teach a little bit with my family survival kit because we're going to reach our teenager. We're going to reach our brother. We're going to reach our sister. We're going to reach our mother. And we're going to see revival come to our home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You have to get prepared. You have to get prepared. So let's dig in here if we can this evening and see what it is that we need. Oh, yeah, this is good. This is good. Well, it was supposed to be better than that. You gotta have something that is able to get the attention of somebody else. See, if you're in the middle of tragedy, you're in the middle of chaos, you gotta be able to sound an alarm. And I'm tonight sounding an alarm for you. That's supposed to be so much more dramatic. <laughs> we have to be able to sound the alarm. And I know that this may be simple. And I know that many of us may, may think, well, we already have that. We already have that. But if you're not getting the attention of somebody who's able to actually meet your need, you're just wasting time. And what happens is we talk a lot of noise and get a lot of noise pollution. And we're never able to cut through the clutter because we simply forgot to sound the alarm. What are you talking about, Pastor Manny? I'm glad you asked. You've got to pray and get heaven's attention for your family. Let me ask this, and I know that this may be a, you may be thinking, well, this is elementary. Good. 
A, B, C. One, two, three. Pray for your family. When was the last time you prayed for that lost loved one? When was the last time you truly sought God and said, Lord, I'm not going to move from this spot until you rescue them from the situation that they're in? Come on, we've got to sound the alarm. We've got to get heaven's attention because here's the deal. All that noise clutter that we oftentimes talk about, and you know that clutter. He said, she said, everybody else said, Facebook post this, post that post. And all of a sudden, we begin to have bitterness and anger and all sorts of unnecessary things against our family. When the Bible says, simply call upon my name and you shall be saved. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But that first starts at an altar. Not just pray prayers like this. God, save my brother. You know he needs to be saved. Of course he needs to be saved. God knows he needs to be saved. Or, or, or we pray prayers like this. We pray prayers like this. Uh, uh, God, <laughs> My brother, he's an alcoholic. He's a drunk. He's a no down, dirty, rotten scoundrel. God, why do you even like him? I don't. And we begin to rehearse every sin that that family member has committed. That's not how we're to pray. Here's how we're to pray. We're to take the position of authority that we have in Jesus Christ and say, Satan, I bind you off my brother's life. I command you right now, every thought that's not of the Holy Spirit, leave his mind. And God, I pray that life begin to spring up all around him. I thank you, God, that he can't escape your presence. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Send people his direction that will be a voice. Send signs that will cause them to turn to you. God, you love my brother more than I do. So get him, Holy Ghost. Not just some um, Get in here and begin to intercede for your family. Sound the alarm. Cut through the clutter. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says this, The God of this age, Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel. You bind that devil and you speak life and watch life come in Jesus' name. The second thing that we need in our survival pack, we got a lot of things in here. Let me see here. All right, let me. This could come in handy. All right, hold on, just. This is awkward. <laughs> oh, oh, this is. This right here. Oh, this is. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, hold on, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, there's no power. There's no power. Oh, there's no power. There's no power. There's nothing connected to a source. See, what we've got to do, church, is we can't just talk about it. we got to be about it. they got to see something different about our life, not just the fact that we've got ourselves a learned tongue and a memorized shout. They've got to see authentic, holy ghost power surging through our life, working all things together for my good. Not that you'll never have a bad day, because I guarantee bad days will come, but when the bad days come they don't last because greater is he that lives on the inside of me than anything in this world because I've got power I've got life batteries you gotta have life 
Because when you put the battery in the light, you better work. There we go. It begins to work. See, your life has to be like that of a battery. <laughs> the only purpose for a battery is to give itself so that the purpose of the light may shine. I got good gospel news for you. It's not all about you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get you shouting. I said, it's not all about you. The reason why you've been saved is so that something can be flow, can flow through you and touch and affect somebody else. See, whenever this thing has batteries, now all of a sudden it has a purpose. The purpose of the battery is to get drained. Some of us need to get drained. But see, here's the thing I find about getting drained. You don't get drained when your capacity comes from a place of love. See, some of us, we get our family saved because it's all about us, and we want to see what we can do. That's selfish motives, and God won't honor that, and you'll keep going around the mountain, you'll keep going around the mountain, you'll keep going around the mountain, but when you get to a place and you say, God, I don't care, I don't care about me, I care about them, oh, Jesus, John, 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 where's John, John, help me, John, help me, John, John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You got to be self-sacrificial in every area of your life. You gotta lay yourself down. It's not all about you, but see, I wanna flip the script a little bit. It is all about you. Me and Miss Lisa were talking a little earlier, and we were talking about this, and, and she said, well, wait a second, I, I wanna help, because I, I have a question. It's not all about you, but yet it's all about you. Because if you won't, then who will? <laughs> if you won't be sacrificial in your living, then how are they ever going to know that Jesus Christ is Lord? If they don't see you live it, if they don't see you out loud, if they don't see you shouting, if they don't see you get everything that you can from this Christian walk, then what's going to attract them to the presence of God? It's not about you, but it's all about you. Because see, where do you find the batteries? Batteries aren't up front here, so all can see. Batteries are underneath and hidden. God, hide me in the secret place. Hide me in the secret place, God. Let me be the one that stands in the gap for my family. Let me be the one that finds a threshing floor that will not move until you show yourself strong. Lord, let me be the voice crying out on behalf of my family. And watch and see what God will do. See, here's another thing that I think we tend to do is we don't treat our family, we'll treat everybody else with love, but we don't treat our family with love. Can we just be real for a little bit? We treat them like they're not good. Don't start treating your family. Here's, here's a little practical, helpful hint for you. Start treating your family like they are saved. Instead of as if they're that heathen, that devil, that thing that you always talk to everybody else about. Am I helping anybody tonight? Start treating them like they're saved. Man, isn't it good that Jesus is alive and well? And just watch them look at you. You lost your mind, Grandma. But they'll know that something alive is on the inside of you. Pastor Parsons said like this, I am enthused because I am infused. I'm infused with glory. I'm infused with miracle signs and wonders. I'm infused with dunamis power. I'm infused with the Holy Ghost. And so I have an enthusiasm on me. You can't be around me for more than five minutes and not get excited, not get enthused because there's so Something living in me that's got to get out there. And I'm... Instead of you, them always seeing you and all you ever do is complain, well, I just don't know about this world. 
What a poor witness. Be the person that speaks faith. Be the person that speaks hope. Don't be the one that casts judgment. Well, I saw who you came to the party with. I've had some family members. My God, they couldn't get a flea saved. They just condemn and judge and try their hardest to do the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the problem, Elder Canfield. So many of us try to do the work of the Holy Spirit and convict, and what happens is we end up condemning. And we put all these rules and regulations that bury them in the law when we are saved by grace. And so they don't want anything to do with your religious Jesus because there's no life. There's no power. Stop condemning your sister, your brother, your children and start loving them the way that he would love them. It's not about you, but it's all about you. Greater love hath no man than a man that laid down his life, my life for you, my life for you. Because what happens is, is now that flashlight is able to serve the purpose that it had intended before it was even in my hand. When the creator of that flashlight purposed it, now that flashlight can come on and not have any issues. There's some of you, your family, your friends have mighty purpose have mighty calls of God. Don't be the one to block them from stepping in to their purpose, but be the one that lays down your life so they may be able to excel in the kingdom of God. <laughs> All right, let's get back to our survival bag here. Now, this is the last and final. And this is a big boy right here. Oh, yeah. Throw away that little flashlight. This is a man's flashlight right here. That's what I'm talking about. We got to be able to shine a light. Can, can, you, can you take down these lights just for a little bit? Take down these lights, gentlemen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> See, we've got to learn to be the light. We got to learn to be the light. Turn those lights back on. And those lights, I'm going to have you work, work with me, light man. See, when there's lights around all over the place, it drowns out my light. And see, some of us think this is the only place that we can show our light. Your light don't mean nothing in this place. It's great that you shine your light in here and you make this thing bright and make me sweat because all these lights up here doing what they do. <laughs> but your light don't do anything in this place, it don't become effective until it gets in darkness. Turn the lights off again. Come on. Light only fulfills its purpose in darkness. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Light only fulfills its purpose in darkness. Light in the midst of other light is nothing more than useless chatter. But when you get light in the middle of darkness, now I can use it. Now I can get somewhere. Now I've got something that I'm working with. Now all of a sudden I can find my way out of whatever situation I'm in. Oh, Jesus, I'm helping somebody. See, if you, if you, if you just this past week, we saw happen all over the place, all over the news. All over the news, we saw this happen. People went without power in Florida, right? But these rescuers were prepared, and they had a light. And sometimes a source of hope was not the voice of, hello, hello, the rescuer was not the other things that he had in his tool bag. But the source of hope was simply the light. Now I've got some place, now I've got some place I can reach out for. Now I've got some place I can get to. And some of you need to begin to be that for your family. Some of you need to begin to be that for your family, for your friends. Some of you need to begin to reach out and see the light through you, in you, outside of this place, and let God use you in a powerful way. Somebody say, I am the light. 
those legs back, I'll turn those legs back, I'll turn those legs back. See, your family doesn't need just a flicker. See that? <laughs> I was a youth pastor a time or two in my life, and I've seen some teenagers come through the door, and one of the biggest issues I always had with your teenagers was they'd come to me and say, my mom comes to church, and she shouts in church, but she cusses at home. My dad comes in here and he can give a two-four shout with the best of them, but I'm telling you, he beats me and looks at pornography at home. Now, these are real testimonies of the church. See, we got a good ability to come in this place and let our light shine in this, but the light shine amongst the other lights is, is useless. Where it really comes in handy is in darkness. Your kids, your family need to see you be the same person in this house as you are in your own house. Don't come in here speaking in tongues when you ain't spoken tongues in your teenager's bedroom for years. Don't come in here trying to open up a Bible when you don't sit your family down and say, this is the word of God and this is who we are. We are believers. We are miracle wonder working believers. Be the light. Be the light. Shine the light. Your family needs you to be the light, not just a flicker when it's convenient, but be consistent. Evangelism is not just something that you do once and go out there and make an impact. Evangelism is something that you live every single day. Be the light. Let your light be something. Let your life be something that is an example that they see. And here's the deal. It may take 10 years. It may take 20 years. But eventually, when chaos comes upon them, they're going to come and say, Hey, Manny, I need your help. I'm going through all sorts of mess. And I need somebody to speak truth to me. And you've always been somebody that speaks truth. And so can you just talk to me for a little bit? And now you're going to have the tools that you need to be a witness in their life. I'm not just telling you this because I think it sounds good and it gave me some good illustrations. I'm saying this from my own life. Right, right. See, I have some family, like most of us that don't believe or have walked away from their faith. My cousin growing up was my best friend. Me and her did everything. She was like my sister. We did everything together. We grew up in church. We would go to Sunday school. We would go to Bible quiz, all sorts. We were just, I mean, she would sing and I would do skits and we were these church kids. She was the most saved person I ever knew in my life. But then all of a sudden she got tangled up in sin. And I saw family members judge her. And I saw family members criticize her. And I saw family members ostracize her. And I saw her begin to go out into the world because that was the only place that she found what she thought was acceptance. And I got to be honest, I was guilty of that too. Who do you think you are coming in here? I know what you did last night. I know who you were with last night. And all I did was push her away. But coming to a place where I understood it's not about me, but it's all about me. I got to be a person that prays and believes and seeks God on her behalf. Right. So I begin to pray. Now, maybe some of you have them family members. They get around you. I don't even want to talk to you about God. You just, all you ever do is talk about God, talk about church. But I lived it. And I didn't start just preaching on her throat. I just loved on her. She had three babies out of wedlock, three different daddies. Never came out here and be like, who do you think you are? You just... Every time I'd go and I'd bless them babies. Every time I had a chance to hug them babies, I would pray over them babies. I would absolutely love her with everything that I had. But another thing that I did is every time I was in a service and I felt the tug of my heart, I would take out an offering envelope. Yeah. Yeah. And I would write on the back of that offering envelope, Rachel. Rachel is saved. Rachel is saved. Rachel is saved. And it took years. She wouldn't even talk to me. 
She wouldn't even talk to me, wouldn't even look at me. And when she did, she just had so much shame, but I was able to cut through that shame this past time I went home. My grandma said, hey, come see Manny preach. She came. And by the time that service ended, she came to an altar and I had a chance to wrap my arms around my cousin my family and we prayed that sinner's prayer and she got her life right and I'm telling you church it started because I was living it I sat an alarm in heaven I began to pray for her I began to mix my praying and my giving I had power I had something on my life that brought conviction and I wasn't just another light and light I went out of my way to make sure she knew that I loved her and the God that I served loved her and there is nothing that she had done that would keep her away from the presence and the glory of God and when she came down to that altar not only was heaven rejoicing but I'm telling you right now my cousin is saved yeah. Yeah. so here's what I want us to do tonight we can talk about it we can be about it how many of y'all have family members that aren't saved? Come on, come on. If y'all saved, you're the, who are you, the Gaithers? My God. Everybody in here has got family members that aren't saved. I want you to pull out an offering envelope right now and that the worship team could join me. And I want you to write on the back of that envelope, just like I did for years, Rachel will be saved. And I want you to name your family member. Who are you believing for? Pastor couldn't have laid it out any more clear this past Sunday that we are in a season right now, the season of tabernacles, where we are going to see more lives changed and more lives saved. And I'm telling you right now, we are in a season of great abundant blessing. And I believe the blessing is not just for you in your own home, but the blessing is for salvation to come to your home. Not just finances, not just healing, but salvation, family salvation. This is it. These are the final moments. You don't want your family to be left without the opportunity to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So tonight I want us to mix our praying with our giving and I want us to believe God. Salvation for my house. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I want you to write on that one side, that family member, now on, the, on the other side, come on. The 100, the Psalm 100, the blessing that is attached to that, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get blessed, but your family's going to get saved. We're going to reach them this season. We're going to see God do the impossible. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, they're coming to an altar. I prophesy it right now in the name of Jesus. Over the next eight weeks, we will see more lives saved than we have seen all year. Over the next eight weeks, we will see this altar full here at an Elkhart and wherever you're watching on rodparsley.tv. Salvation is here. I want you to get that offering envelope in your hand and I want you to give I want you to give tonight. Continue to press toward that mark. Over the next four weeks, $100. However that may come, it may be 25 last week, 25 this week. But tonight, I want you to attach something to that. And ushers, I want you to bring those offering containers up here on the, on the, on the front of the platform. And what I want you to do is I want you to get that envelope in your hand. And when I say three, I want you to come down to this altar and I want you to stand and proxy for your family member. Drop that gift, drop that offering in the bucket. And then I want us just to begin to pray for the next few moments. Pray for the next few moments as we begin to see God do 
the impossible. One, two, three. Everybody stretch your hands this direction. God, we thank you that our family is saved. And Lord, right now we speak to every family member. I speak to Mariah and I speak to Brandy and I speak right now to every single family member that is in this offering tonight, God. Lord, you know them by name. And God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would begin to go to them right now. God, I pray protection over them. I pray healing over them. But God, I thank you that deliverance is coming in Jesus' name. We bind you, devil. You have no right on our kids. You have no right on our family. And so right now, we put a bloodline around them and we just declare the heavens begin to open and God I speak restoration and wholeness in Jesus name now shout cause your family is saved yeah one more time say we talked about the prayer of agreement see the enemy wants you to believe that you can't be vulnerable and find somebody to agree with about your lost son or daughter or your neighbor or your aunt or your uncle and he wants you to attempt to carry that on yourself but let me tell you I believe in the spirit when we with this offering we began to stand in agreement with a covenant making God and a covenant keeping God but here's what I want you to do real quick we got a few minutes left I want you to turn somebody by you and I want you with your voice tell them the name of the person that you're believing to see in this altar over the next six to eight weeks come on turn to them and tell them 
Now I want you to grab hands right now and we're going to pray the prayer of agreement over that name. Come on, look at him in the eye. Lift your voice in this great Summer All Tabernacle tonight. Come on, if you're watching online tonight, come on, I'm standing in agreement with you right now that your sons and your daughters will be saved, that they will come to a full understanding that there is still a cross that bleeds, that there is still a Savior that saves. It is not God's will that they should perish, but they should come to the saving knowledge of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that they will begin to walk in resurrection power, walking victorious on this earth in which God gave us dominion over death, hell, and the grave. Come on, let's stand in the earth and agree with a covenant keeping God that he is able to save the unsavable as we learn to love the unlovable. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand and see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says if any two or three of us stand in the earth agreeing and touching on any one thing, we shall ask what we will and it shall be given to us. I believe I'm standing in the middle of a group of people tonight that we're here asking. We're here and we're going to seek and we're going to knock on heaven's doors until heaven demonstrates itself faithful. Hallelujah. 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 Now begin to dance like you believe and celebrate that you received when you ask. Because my Bible declares that we can believe we receive when we ask. Hallelujah. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Act like they're kneeling at this altar right now. Get those tears of joy by faith. Get those tears of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we believe we receive when we ask. We call our sons and daughters in from the north. We call them in from the south. We call them in from the east. We call them in for the west. And we say to them, come and dine. The master calleth, come and dine. You can feast at Jesus' table all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe it. God, sink this word into our spirit tonight. Sink it into our spirit tonight. Sink it into our spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing it. Yeah. We sing it now. Yes. The word of God declares, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, and rulers of the darkness of this age. Jesus said to his disciples, they came back licking their chops after they'd went out and not seen these things accomplished that they, he set them out to do. And he pulled them aside and said, my dear children, do you not understand? These things come out by prayer and fasting. You wrote a name on an envelope tonight. That's a first step. But now the battle starts. Listen to me. Our pastor told us this Sunday that we have got to understand that we are built for the battle. We are built for war. We are called to conflict in the church. Everywhere Jesus went, he went and he calls conflict with a mindset or an attitude or a belief system. He was always causing a ruckus to the way people were living. But I believe this week we need to take another step. We need to step into the realm of denying ourselves for the sake of those who have yet defined the grace of God. And we need to begin to believe God and push away the plate. Push away that phone. We're still believing and we're still reading through Psalm 100. Amen. But push, it, push away the things of this earth and find yourself before a holy God and begin to pray by yourself until you're no longer praying by yourself on behalf of those who are far from God. And if all your family's saved, listen to me. Come get a name from me because I'll give you a name. Amen. Because my family wasn't born saved. My family, we got some lost ones in my crew. And you can pray for my family and agree with me, amen. How many of you in this room tonight will say with me, Pastor Tim, 
I'll at least fast one meal this week to believe God for harvest. For, amen. For somebody that's lost. Thank you. How many of you say, Pastor Tim, I'll at least fast one whole day, sun, sunset to sunset. I'll, I'll stand with you in fasting this week. Amen. It's this time, church. It's not time to be pretty. It's not time to be cute. It's not time to rely on programs and systems and strategies, but it's time to rely on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the power of the Holy Ghost that Pastor Manny was talking about tonight. Man, I feel... You lit my candle tonight, Pastor Manny. Thank you, my brother. What a word. What a word. What a word. Proud of you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we leave tonight and we leave this great summer all tabernacle and online, those of you here in Columbus, we have a home football game.